Welcome to a Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. We've got our BDM uh, huge party on Saturday. <laughs> oh, you forgot what it was. <laughs> well, I almost called it our anniversary <laughs> show because I'm confusing. Well, I was it, like, I need it, to plug it, that too. We're, we're also going to talk a little bit about anniversaries here in a second. Yeah. But our BDM only party is a Saturday. It's a luau party, as you've heard. Uh, you have to be a BDM to attend. You do? There's no tickets or anything. I think there's a little confusion on our BDM page. People like to th- make things complicated, if, uh, namely you. Um, if, the more you tell people, the more they think there's a ticket. If you are a current paying BDM, yes. you and a guest can go to, and your guest does not have to be a BDM, no. but you can come to the party and just show up. Yeah. But you have to be a current paying BDM. If you don't know that, you could easily check at yes. to it, make sure you are still current. Yeah, and if you need to check that, if you need to get in there, the easiest way, Tomadan.com slash registration will take you right there you can log into your account you can check it you can make any yeah. credit card changes you need to whatever you need to do it's all there at tomanddan.com and our act anniversary show that's coming up may 31st um that's at the wayne dench performing arts center the ritz carlton it's not at the ritz carlton <laughs> please do not tell people it's at the ritz carlton <laughs> it's at the ritz wayne it's the dench. ritz theater at the wayne dench performing arts center the theater is at the center. At TomandDan.com, there's a web link with the anniversary yeah. ACT logo. You said Ritz-Carlton, though. I should probably <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> you click on it. Because one listener will show up at the Ritz-Carlton. <laughs> I ain't nobody here. Uh, tickets are $10. There's still probably under 40 left, maybe 30 um, and uh, you get uh, a free drink to the after party at Tuffy's. Yeah, Tuffy's Bottle Shop and Lounge. We're going to be at the music box with some live music, hanging out. Yeah, and um, then you go, well, you'll get a free ACT gift, which I got to remind me to let Eric know to order because. Uh, oh, God, what's the, the gift? Quarter. Do you know it what just, it is? Yeah? You know, um, something is as cheap yeah. as possible. What is it? A koozie <laughs> bottle opener. <laughs> what do we got? Let's go the... through the list. You no, got no, koozie. We're, you know we're you've gonna got do? Bot- bottle opener. We were, you've got sticker. We were gonna do post-it notes with the ACT. Uh, yeah, that was my logo. idea. Yeah, I'm yeah, taking credit yeah, for that. Yeah, idea. Okay, that was well, my idea. And we're gonna give everybody a post-it note. Well, although, what the hell are they using it for? I guess you still use post-it notes. I still uh, use post-it notes. Yeah, yeah. For I, uh, at the very least, you cover up the camera on your computer. Oh, we should put that on the note. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, see, that's your idea. Yeah, yeah. That's so great. The hackers don't see. Uh, what you guys just you. what you guys just got to see was organic genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You so, got to see. I came up with post-it notes. He came up with a witty phrase. Slap yeah. it on there. Bada bing. You'll get some anti hammer hand post-it notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I had some people ask when the um the shirt the political shirts. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Those will be for sale first at our BDM only party nice. Saturday. Okay. And then cool. whatever's left will be at tomandan.com. Have we ever done Tom and Dan condoms? I don't think we ever did. Yes. We oh, did. we did? At Fairville, yeah. They weren't. I don't count that. If you're working with a, a high end adult novelty company, like yeah. Fairville has been in the business so long that I don't even know. If they did it, it's on brand. If do we, Did we do it alone? No, 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 but they like radio them. stations notoriously for ye- real radio. When I first came to real radio, it was working for Ed Till. Ed Till had a box of real radio condoms and it was back when they would put the condom in the plastic thing and you could see the ring. But then they would put a piece of cardboard over it. Really? Why? Yeah, to to brand it, I think, because okay. the condoms you couldn't brand the little bag. Everything, oh, yeah. everything is getting just a tiny bit yeah. essier, if you know what I mean. And everybody <laughs> notices this. So back yeah. in the day, when you were doing novelty condoms for a radio station, it was a Trojan. It was a real use. I <laughs> used radio station condoms because the radio station bought good condoms. There was no way to buy secondhand Chinese Alibaba <laughs> Tumu condoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't buy that. American-made condoms. They were real. You had Trojan. You had Durax. You had mm. all that. And then they, I think they were Durax. These condoms are made in a factory in Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> and they would put the, they would put a piece. It almost looked like a book of matches okay and it was like a piece of cardboard and then they'd stamp the old school the old real radio logo the ne- the good one that everybody likes not the splotch not the new one it's fine the new one's fine i'm talking about the old one the old classic i don't know what it looks like <laughs> it was <laughs> just it was just that. the letters and then, yeah, 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 yeah it was cool it was like really really cool but yeah we used to give those out i remember we had a box of them and ed was like yeah you can use those they're great these are great condoms well, our demographic doesn't use condoms anymore. What do you are? Uh, I think our demographic, you know, they're like blue chew. What's blue chew? Isn't that the chewable Viagra? 
Oh, no, not that old yet. They're our age. They're getting there. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but yeah. like most of the people yeah. I know that use that are people my age. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I don't know anybody. Like I don't know any old people that talk about using Bluetooth. All the people I talk, I know, you don't know them. <laughs> you know, I know, but, but I just, but but the people that I do know that like they're they use it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Is that bad? No, no. You can uh, use chewable Viagra. I mean, you can get it online. Yeah, but why would for... you need it? Everything's you know, like, uh, I know everybody says it's fine. They go, but it's fine. Does no, this make it better, quicker, faster, stronger? No, no, no. You're, but you're saying yours is fine. Most people's not fine. Most people's your age uh, doesn't work At 47, work very well. really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know yeah. that was a thing. And I'm not bragging. Right. I just, like, I thought. Have that, you seen the commercial? I saw <laughs> that, that happen in your 60s or your 50s, early no, 60s. No, no, no. It starts in your no, late 30s. I did not a know. A lot that. of people. Did like I say, know you're the abnormality where uh, you still are virile. Wow. Uh, and mine's not even controlled by testosterone or anything or horniness. Mine's just magic. It's just straight <laughs> elfin magic. I think it's tied into your anxiety. Probably you, you get is. anxiety bees. Yeah, I get a boater. <laughs> yeah. When I'm scared, I get a boater. Yeah. Um, you want to do some emails? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, here we go. This is from BDM Josh in Altima. It said, hey, T&D, was leaving Tangeray's downtown last night after some golden tea with my buddy and got intercepted by a woman peddling weed edibles. I politely declined and kept walking, but my buddy... Ever the salesman engaged. She explained that she was handing out samples for a nude weed cafe down from Tangeray's and that we should check it out. We walked in, got ID'd by an armed bouncer wearing a bulletproof vest, and proceeded to be offered weed in all forms. Flour, lemonades, coffee, vape cartridges, you name it. They also had mocktails and non-alcoholic beer they would add drops of THC in, all in a custom, uh, all in a custom amount to your liking. Our bartender explained they operate under a, quote, agriculture, agricultural loophole. I asked if it was similar to how you have to sign and declare I was signaling a train or scaring some birds to buy illegal fireworks in Cocoa Beach, to which she looked really confused. She, ex <laughs> <laughs> she explained, though, it had to do that when they harvest, that allows them to do it. She said they are trying to stay low-key for now, but are poised to be big in rec if recreational passes. Best part, she said they can't advertise on anything but Pornhub. The flyers for the place have best weed in Apopka, Florida. Porn guy on them and she says that he is her boss and is real so the guy that goes yeah, yeah he's delta want, nine yeah, it's the delta it's the yeah. uh, chronic guru guy so yeah, yeah. uh it was weird yeah. so he i guess he walked into a new shop that will be yeah, opening yeah. up by chronic guru so they're just jumping they're trying to you know so the loophole is is that it's not the because i think the law and listen i'm no uh law specialist as you know um but the law says something about specific THC in the form that we know THC, right? And the Delta 9 uh, basically, I guess, is bioidentical, but it's it's a different, you know, it's in the way the law is yeah, worded. Yeah, no, I get it. It makes Delta 9 not illegal, and it does the same thing as the THC that we know. Now, a few people and in the chat room are saying things like, you'll never need your card again. Is it, but I still love having my card so i have the ability to legally have medical marijuana and the thc well, that you know right but like I, guess, I don't want to just buy marijuana and be carrying around marijuana illegally i don't want to do that yeah and i guess the, it's not a big deal to me but if you do it, i don't care but i'm saying it's easy for me to, i like having the card and if you i bet if you ask a cop because like if you have a bud of delta nine in your pocket, and you have no um, a medical card, right? So then the Do you get a citation. The police officers like the, you know this smells like weed. It looks like weed. I guess they test it, in like the I, they have like a weed tester and a vial or something. It turns oh purple. Or, I don't know. Maybe that's just coke. You I, have to stand I don't know there how for forever. The purple one's math. I've seen that. So then if but I know they do have the ability to test for THC, but maybe that doesn't pop. The Delta 9 doesn't pop the same as uh, like the regular medical marijuana Is THC. Is it really that sophisticated? Where if but, I pee and then somebody smoking Delta 9 pees, they can tell the difference? I think so, yeah. No yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. I don't no. believe that. The people that smoke Delta 9 don't get popped for uh, THC because they're 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 testing for that. But they're saying I know a on lot the package it has THC in it. A lot of truckers I know. They, really? Yeah, but th it has THC. But no, that's just marketing. It says that because that's what people want, and so they have to put so that. So either way, it's lying. I think, I think. 
But the Delta Nine. We is gotta get to the bottom of this. I'm so <laughs> yeah. sick of so but, much m- misinformation dude, we, about this. We talked to a BDM farmer that uh, farms. Chat room saying it's not right. We got a guy in there, Mike, saying not true, Tom. Bad advice. He's saying it big letters. What? But you won't get popped for. Uh, call in. You can call in one eight four four Tom in Dan. So, Tell us what we're wrong about. He, well, yeah, yeah. He's saying you will test positive for Delta Nine. Okay. Well. If they're testing for Delta 9, will you test positive for THC? I think you will Delta because 9. Delta 9 has THC in it. That's what I've always thought. Okay. I thought Delta 9 would make you pop no matter what. Well, then why is it legal to sell Delta 9? We don't know. It, because it's <laughs> yeah. not the same It's not the same plant. It contains its version of THC. Okay. It, it, think of it. I, I, get, so this is I how thought I'm, THC was illegal to this sell. This is how I'm settling it in my brain. It's multiverses, right? You've got multiverse over here is medical marijuana. It's got, it is marijuana with terpenes and, and you know, indica sativa yeah. and THC. And then From over here, you've got Delta the cannabis 9. cannabis plant. Yeah. Right. And over here, you've got Delta 9, which is another derivative of it that's not under this policed version. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. is the loophole that still has THC. It still has cannabinoids. It still has everything. It's just slightly uh, different. Okay. okay. And they're not so, policing that one. That's what I. That's how I've settled it in my brain. I don't know if that's right. Okay, that may, that makes sense if this person in our chat room is right. If you still get popped for THC, although I will say that the people I've talked to multiple listeners that only do Delta Nine because yeah they are they're afraid into they're into it. Yeah. Well, they're afraid because for their work or whatever they can't do THC. So maybe well, they're misinformed. I hope they. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have that no would be idea. Terrible. But um, I I mean, people have told me. Who knows if this, this is correct? But they have specifically told me I do Delta Nine, so I don't get popped for my THC drug test. You know what I'd I rather hear? That you know could what be I'd rather hear? Part. What I'd rather hear is I smoke Delta Nine and I take multiple tests and I've never popped. That's not what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. hearing yeah, I do he Delta could, Nine yeah. because if I get Peace tested, of mind, yeah, yeah, it could not even work. You yeah. know, so but then so now there's shops like this guy said downtown. From the porn, uh, best weed in Sanford, all that. Yeah, guy. yeah, best weed so, in the popka. So now he is playing a dangerous game where all it takes is one push politically towards outlawing Delta Nine, and then all of a sudden you're operating an illegal business, uh, yeah, and you're well, gonna shut everything yeah, down. You're a whole. Yeah. Now he's probably betting on the fact that it does. Like he knows Florida is eventually gonna go recreational, right? Um, but even like when I was talking to um, uh, Dr. Chan Latte mm-hmm. about this, and uh, if it does go recreational, um, I imagine they'll do the same thing that Denver and I think California is like this and a, a handful of other states where you'll get a discount if you have your medical card. So it ends up being cheaper to uh. buy because I know my brother-in-law, he lives in Colorado. He still has his medical card in Colorado because he gets so much cheaper. I showed my and medical it, card in Colorado, too, because if you show that you have a medical card from other states, certain dispensaries, can, give you a discount they, can't, they can't honor it because it's, you know, it, but yeah. they can give you a discount. Yeah, well, yeah. they're selling to anybody anyway, I did that in Colorado on Cheaper Tooth. So he, uh, he said that you can get it cheaper. So I imagine I'm going to hmm. keep my, and if you can, I'll keep my medical recommendation so I can get the cheaper marijuana because I buy enough to, that it matters, you know. And my God, like the discounts that dispensaries are offering, like they are all insane. Like they're like it's first crazy. purchase, 60 percent off, second purchase, 50 percent off, third purchase, 40 percent off. It is like, my God, you could buy an insane amount well, and have it forever. Do you remember early on? Freeze they it. don't do this anymore. But do you remember really early on? And this may have been one of the reasons why I think you and Sam went and got your by the way, BudDocs.org uh, yeah. uh, tells you all those deals. Yeah, Bud deals. Uh, BudDocs.org and look under Bud deals. Do you remember back when I would have to send in a physical check to the government to do it? But I remember going and picking up before it came to the studio one day. Do you remember that time they gave me like, like I bought just my small amount and it was like for every $5 you spend, you got a free joint? Do you remember when oh, I came yeah. in? Like I came yeah. in with like fifteen joints, free joints. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, look yeah. at all these joints! I was just handing them to everyone. It was like joints forever. I gave like five to Sam. I gave you three. You don't even smoke them. I was just, I was just like, I don't know what to do with all this free stuff that they're giving me. They're just handing me weed. Those joints still roll around in my medicine <laughs> drawer, <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm gonna smoke these one day. Oh and come on! I want to like smoke them in my old. hot tub. They're right five there. years old. Yeah, Let me get so a good. new one. Um, let's see. You want to do another? Let's do another email right here. This is from John. He says, gentlemen, I'm just like Tom, just spot checking my phone. I currently have 20 apps open, two of which are internet browsers. I attached a picture of my Samsung browser. Check the bottom. It has 99 tabs open. 
<laughs> which apparently is the limit because I tried to open a 100th tab and it required me to close out a tab. <laughs> I blame Sam Samsung. I never cracked a screen in my life until this phone. On the second crack screen now, I <clears throat> I now only listen to exclusively T&D content. Wonder if there's a, co uh, a correlation here. Anyway, a crack goes right through the fingerprint reader, so it won't work most of the time unless my thumb is wet. Then it works great. So if I want to unlock my phone, all I have to do is lick my thumb first. Just like you, Tom. Love the show, BDM John. There you go. And then he shows a picture. Here we go. At the very end, you can see 99 tabs open. <laughs> Oldest tab will close if you open a new one. And he was Googling NYC bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There's your punchline. Uh, just like you, Tom. <laughs> I have 99 tabs open. I have to lick my thumb. <laughs> To use my phone. <laughs> Let's um, jump over to some voice. This is no way to live, sir. Uh, coming from me, I have dealt with this my entire life, and my sons, I look at them, they're going to be plagued with this curse as well, and uh, I feel bad for everybody. Else. Um, uh, For those of you that listened to, was it on the Friday Free Show, we talked about you... Uh, accidentally playing the most vulgar tenacious d songs oh, yeah. for your son oh. uh here is a voicemail gentlemen no longer sam uh hope you guys are doing well i'm um, listening to the friday free show and tom is talking about tenacious d and his kids finding it and i immediately just start laughing because I swear Tom and I are just living in similar just like you Tom universes somehow but uh I had the exact same thing happen I was like oh tribute it's clean it's good people love it everything's great and of course they got into it they love it it's a fun song it's a great song it's uh stairway to heaven right I mean it's like they love it it's yeah it is like a stairway to heaven did you get any have you had any issues since then or did they flag that in their trauma brains for uh, you know, like not understanding sex later. Here's They're going to think like ladies have tails. Or... What I realized is that uh, they didn't, I think I went inside to get my bike from the trainer Yeah. and I walked far enough away from the truck that my phone oh, thank disengaged God. Thank God. from Bluetooth. And while I was like in the other room and then I started walking back, it re-engaged. So when I looked down and I'm like, oh my God, these bits played, these ten uh, tenacious D's, like it played when my phone was disengaged. Oh, thank God. I think. <laughs> I'm never going to ask them and I'm never going to bring it up. Did you me. ever have an I instant like that happen with your dad? Do you remember seeing anything you shouldn't have seen? I don't have a lot of those. Like a lot of my friends have I mean, like, there oh, was nothing, uh, I saw know. my parents doing it or something. Like, no, I mean like that, like the normal coming oh, no, of age. No. Thing. I, don't, I don't think I live the normal or... Maybe that stuff doesn't happen as often. You know, like we always grew up or I grew up watching movies, listening to shows where they'd always have the quintessential. Like you'd hear your mom and dad doing it or yeah, you'd yeah. see them or you'd walk in. And you're scarred for life. It, I didn't know that yeah, this yeah. was not I got, <laughs> it was not a thing. I had none what? of that. I've not I have. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. They never it, not a not a nothing. One of my friends would uh, smoke cigarettes behind his house, like in the corner behind this tree. Okay. Uh, and so Trashy. He, he'd go out in high school. He'd just go behind this tree and smoke cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do in Florida. In, in Miami. That's how you become a man in Florida. And he said, and he told me one day uh, he was smoking, and he looked inside this kitchen, <laughs> and his dad was... Head button his mom's buffalo on. Dude, that's too. That's too much. On the kitchen counter, and good for uh, them. What are they? <laughs> in their late thirties? Their late thirties? Early thirties? I I don't know how old his parents. Like, I'm just trying to think. People had kids younger. School. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In high I'm school, thinking, I'm thinking they're going to be thirties. Yeah, well, late thirties, maybe, okay. and maybe early forties. Probably our age. Me and Crystal's age. Can uh, you imagine? You you get the good countertops. He, so you got the right countertops for it, buddy. He told me a traumatized, and he still. Every time now he associates that with smoking. <laughs> I think he said he quit after that. Like, and then he's like, I can't get it out of my head. We used to make fun of him, and we used to ask him, to, "Hey, your mom's smoking?" Because we knew his mom. They were like, "Tell us the details." Or we used to, we were like, "Tell us what happened." How was she groomed? And, and then I'm like, "Did you watch for a long time? Yeah. You know, a horrible." Did you smoke a full time? cigarette? Did you light one off the other one? And uh, I, you know, it it's pretty him. twisted to hot box and then light your second cigarette <laughs> with the one going out while you're watching your dad do yeah, that yeah, yeah that's trauma he said he just caught it and then immediately disgusted ran away i'm not but powerful enough to sit through that there are some people i know I, that can sit through anything i just i'm not powerful enough to do that also i've also heard other stories did you ever friends. have any of that you didn't no, have any of that no not with any of your stepdad 
with your stepdad? No, no, no. no. Again, I I agree. This is another I, reason we're in business. This one, is not a thing. One time I walked in while my stepdad was pooping. <laughs> that doesn't count. And I opened the kid's bathroom <laughs> and then I remember seeing this. <laughs> he, was, and he, he was a real man construction worker, tanned yeah, as yeah. a football. Oh, he'll, he'll he, had a must, yeah. he had a mustache. Like he was ripped. Yeah. He wore uh, a hat. He had diabetes. <laughs> yeah, he wore a Guy Harvey hat uh, yeah. and a Tasmanian devil tattoo. Hell yeah, he did. And uh, you bird, better. Were and bird. Bird. Yeah, yeah. Handshake, they'll break your goddamn hand. I shook his hand. What was that like, room? You got so mad. He's like, get out of here. Someone's in here. And he's like, <laughs> I, then he's screaming. He's like, I have no privacy in this house. And you, I'm like, you killed the man's bird. <laughs> I'm like, why'd you lock the door, Do old man? Do you remember this memory? Do you remember there was some sort of parade or street party? It was like a uh, it was a morning show monster street party or something, and we had a room above. Yeah, the VIP room. The VIP yeah, room, yeah. and that's where I met him. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. and I stood up there drinking beers, and then he's yeah. and he's very quiet, didn't say a word, but he shook my hand. He broke my goddamn hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like, <laughs> he crunched yeah. it. I'm like, oh my god, he was so nice. What a yeah, nice no. dude. I now that you know, I was thinking about it because I told that story about him taking uh, me and my French buddy Eric to paintball up yeah. in Ocala. He's a good dude. And I was thinking about like because he's always so quiet construction worker real man you know like yeah. quintessential like and then he had a uh he had like a shady pass where he used to be a biker yeah yeah in like the 70s uh and he'd seen like, some Florida. things and done some things <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he'd been around some yeah, things. i think he did some time maybe yeah. i don't know yeah well but i mean just, i never you know, we never really talked about his past most of any of the people he murdered were <laughs> yeah. mongols and uh, rival <laughs> gangs i mean what gang do you remember the affiliation he had no he was he an outlaw he told pagan. me pagan bet he was a pagan he told me uh, like he, that he was. In let's a, start a. Let's see if we can get some real biker gang guys in here to talk to us. <laughs> he wasn't. He, no, I don't know. That's. Uh, I mean, I want to fly. Clo- I want to fly close to the sun. <laughs> it's too serious. This is the year. I want to fly close to the sun. But uh, my st- yeah, my stepdad took me a t- like thirteen years old, yeah. and my buddy yeah. drove me from Miami to Ocala. This doesn't sound like a biker to me. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like he's had a change of heart and uh, to some dumb concert. No, no, dude, the paintball. Oh, and okay. it, it was a twenty-four hour paintball say, was he game. Did you see Deftones or something? <laughs> they, they did this. Uh, I wonder if they still do it. It's in Ocala, Florida. They they, they used to call like Wally's World paintball. Oh, I remember Wally's World. Yeah, something like dude, that. Dude, that was like the, they did that tw- was the mecca. They did 24-hour paintball games, and then so he drove yeah. us up there. I have friends that did this. You probably yeah. did this with some of my friends. I remember these. And then he just slept in the my mom's van. Uh, for, well, that's easy to for, do when you've for, killed somebody. For, for you, know, like you can do anything. Yeah, but He's think, tough. But think about like uh, like he did this for his stepson and his stepson's friend. Like, uh, that's a generous dude. I think the, <laughs> you know I think like, the chat room I don't is, know if I'd do that for my uh, my wife's steps on. The I'm chat like, room is cor- correcting, correcting us a little bit. Okay. Um, I got to go in here. I've still got my towels like, up on here. You for sure not driving your steps on to Ocala. It was Wayne's World. Oh, okay. Wayne's World. Wayne's paintball. World of Paintball. Wayne and Jackie Dolak, known worldwide for their 24-hour role-playing scenario games, are proud to announce Central Florida's finest paintball facility, Wayne's World of Paintball, located in Ocala, the field has been designed with multiple game formats and objectives in mind. This place looks dope. Damn. And uh, he just sat there, drank beer, and watched TV uh, because my mom had uh, a, a conversion van, so she had a box tube TV. In he was like living a, the life. Twelve inch, and he was in there watching. What's he watching? What do you watch? I, I, you could only, boxing. My dad watched a lot of boxing. <laughs> there, you couldn't get reception, so all he, he had was VHS, the, oh. <laughs> VHS tapes. I don't know what he was watching. Yeah, you know my friends just that, drinking beer the whole time. My friends that had vans that had TVs were the TVs were useless unless you had an input. Yeah, and then we didn't have like a some sort of satellite. Yeah, antenna, Would you, you have a bunch of tapes up there, like yeah, Ghostbusters, yeah, yeah. Indiana <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jones, yeah. are rattling around while you're driving <laughs> yeah, yeah. down the road? There was a, a, yeah. a tape storage. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can't leave the them right in there, they'll melt. Oh, yeah, it got hot as yeah, hell. But yeah. they're all yellowed from smoking in there because oh, he yeah. was smoking and drinking the whole but time. But smoking in a van is fun. <laughs> yeah. I think vans are like almost like they're made for smoking. I didn't know I grew up trashy until I got to be an adult. I don't think anybody does. <laughs> like, Florida people, like, I'm a Florida person, tried and true. Like, I'm riding around in a little, remember the little bubble-shaped Honda Civic? Yeah, It's yeah. one of my favorite cars. If I could find a white, if I could find an 83 Honda Civic white with the black vinyl interior, I would buy it right now. <laughs> it was my mom's car. It was a favorite car we would tool around in, oh. and she'd smoke with the windows rolled up. <laughs> and I loved it. I loved that car. It was just a fun little car. 
You know what? I'm robbing my sons of growing up trashy because you gonna start smoking with them. They're growing up at like you know, Crystal's constantly telling them the right things and uh, monitoring everything yeah, except for YouTube and some other things. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff you should be monitoring. Right? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. too hard. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, so maybe the, they'll get it from that. The other maybe people's influences that. I don't monitor. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's good. Maybe you know because they need something. Anyway, um, let's try a voicemail. Let's try this one about Matt McCusker we had in a couple weeks ago. Hey, I just want to say that you guys are doing the Lord's work. I just listened to the Matt McCusker uh, interview, and you guys were talking about Hemis, and boy, oh boy, uh, I've had them before, never had one this terrible uh, that I'm going through in the current moment. I mean, the past four days, I have not been able to shit. Oh, man. And my wife, I, I didn't know what it was. I thought maybe, you know, just constipated, whatever. And uh, my wife got me that uh, magnesium citrate or whatever that makes you shit your brains out. And it was god-awful. Um, but the, the knot is still there, you know. feel like a like a rat or a gerbil. You, how- okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm letting it go. I'm brave. I'm letting it go. Uh, why not, are you telling us this? I'm not. Fla- we, we were talking about it with Matt McCusker. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about hemorrhoids. Yeah, but he had no idea about hemorrhoids before. A lot Matt of people McCusker. don't. A lot of people don't know about their bodies. <laughs> he, was, like, he just. Learned I learned about- that we had in Doctor Powers today. <laughs> like, like uh, people were like, do- what was that that we was talking about? Like, just to stop what? Like, people don't know nothing, man. People are dumb. You reach back there, you feel something weird. You think you're dying. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it, it was only in recent times of doing this show. It was only moving our show to this studio and interacting with more and more people that I ever understood how many different hypochondriacs <laughs> there are out there and people that don't know and really dumb people, <laughs> really dumb people. So uh, I'm he, trying to get rid of my hemorrhoids right now. A lot of people will suffer from hemorrhoids. I bet yours are better for one reason. I never had hemorrhoids. Well, but I bet you're, but you're th- doing better back there with your fissure uh, because uh, of drinking. Uh, yeah. I think drinking has a lot to do with that, guys. Yeah. That yeah. that is the advice I would throw out to you. If you have a bunch back there, if you're like, if it's Grape City, then what I would say to you is, how much are you drinking? Yeah. Healthy much? living does help a lot it, of stuff. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Tom and I are learning that, which is ridiculous uh, because it's not as fun. But it um, isn't as fun. But it makes sense if you think about it. Like what you put into your body helps where it comes out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. garbage in, garbage <laughs> out, and uh, it will make a difference. I um, was in a play. Some people have they get the surgery. Their, oh, their I hemorrhoids. know people have, have had that. That's and rough. My uh, my mother, um, she. Her best friend got the surgery. For and women, it's worse. It is. And when she got it done, it afterwards they were like, uh, ma'am, you've had the surgery now. So from now on, until you die, you will no longer be able to control your flatulence. <laughs> oh, man. And it was just like, it's wide open. <laughs> and you do, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> nothing can be done. It's just, <laughs> it's just constantly yeah. flowing. It's like meditating. They tell you when you meditate, you're supposed to think of meditation as like traffic. And you're not supposed to impede the cars or, or get in the way of any of the cars. You're supposed to just let the traffic roll. That's what your farts become. Did you, do you realize how rough women have it? In this world, uh, they I do. I, I probably contribute <laughs> to it a little bit, right? They have to make the humans, yeah, that uh, that the world that eventually depends will, on. <laughs> they make the humans that eventually will neglect them. So, and then in the process of making those humans, it just destroys their body, yeah, because well, uh, the weak ones, yeah. <laughs> then do I? I mean, partly because of how. Uh, they have to get the humans Is out. Is it because babies just have gotten bigger down there? Are babies bigger? Oh, I yeah, think babies bigger. are bigger. Yeah, yeah. But so you could make an argument. And though, also, women if we are were healthier, then women later. would be healthier, right? Yeah, yeah. Because ba- you're supposed to have your baby optimum. They say 12 years old. You're supposed yeah, to have a baby. yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones, yeah. like it's like uh, right when uh, they bring out the bed sheet, they're like, "She's ready." I mean, so you're talking about women, you know, ancient women having babies when they're. 13, 14 years old. Uh, if you were 18, you were considered an old hag at the point. You know what I'm saying? I know. And, and now women are having babies in their 40s. I mean, if 18 is old <laughs> hag, what's 40? That's super Oh, Oh, that's a grab. You're dead by then. Uh, but women are having babies in their 40s, and it's just wrecking their body. And then uh, they have to get paid less, all the other stuff. <laughs> it was like, man, that's not fair. Yeah. Not fair at all. Well, on to the next voicemail. All right. Hey, everyone. I love... 
having live music in studio. It's amazing. I think for the next band that you get in should be that men's quartet that came in <laughs> where Tom <laughs> had to listen to the wheezing. I can't even talk about it without laughing because it was absolutely hilarious. But anyway, the guys that um, he was wheezing real hard and Tom <laughs> could hear it in his headphones. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sometimes people get things <laughs> in their mind. Like that. We were talking about the Sea Breeze Quartet. Yeah, yeah. For, we, do you want the same exact thing? You're not gonna laugh as hard because no, you already it, heard it. It'll never happen again. It, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. can never happen again. <laughs> like, that was just happenstance. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, but I they like, signed the bathroom. Did you know that? I mean, one of them is most likely oh, statistically dude. not alive anymore. I have a theory. The Sea Breeze Quartet were in here, right? And they signed the wall. Yeah. And when did they do this? It was February, and there's a date in the bathroom. You can see it on the wall. 17? It may have been. It was February seven, 17th, but it was like 20. No, no, I was like 2017. 20, I think it was 2018 or 2017, but here's yeah. the deal. The, the, they signed to the left of the toilet. It's disappearing off the wall. Oh, like there's back to the future. It's back to the future. I am going there. Look, I'll show it to you right now. The Seabreeze Quartet signed. Like there's two members left. But they, I, when they're gone, it just disappears. I think that's what's. I I, I, I will take a picture. And then the of cartoon it. disappears from our website. And I'll, then there's no re, like there's no audio of it. And it's like, do you want wait to, a minute, did here. this actually happen? I'm gonna run. Or did we invent this? I'm gonna take a quick photo. Okay. Plug something really fast. All right. Uh, our ACT anniversary show. Oh, we. Uh, we have um, $7 BDM shirts on the site right now while supplies last. Uh, you have to be a BDM to buy that. We will have the Tom and Dan political shirts, which is our third incarnation right. of, uh, of the political shirts. We've You're made. not going to believe They'll be up on Monday. You're not going to believe this. Look at this. It's dead center. Oh, yeah, it is fading away. Oh, wow. Hold what? On. What, what year is it? What does it say? Oh, 16. Yeah, dude, the signature here. Uh, eight I'll, years ago. There's the signature. I can put it up there for everybody to see. And then you zero in, and it's literally fading away. Uh, <laughs> like, I wonder. What does that mean? Look up a sea, sea Breeze Quartet and see if they're still. If they're all there. dead, I'm going to make Tom believe in God. Uh, I mean, they we're in their 70s? Uh, still together. Nope, still better still, than ever. Still the, oh, no, these are ladies. Oh, their wives uh, took it over. That's what it appears. These are all um, middle, like older, middle old ladies. Like, yeah, huh. that's not them, but that's their page. I wonder if their wives took it over. They're like, in honor of our husbands. Yeah, I don't know. That's very interesting. Well, if anybody knows the Seabreeze Quartet, we'd we'd love to talk to them again. Um, let's do another voicemail. Let me find you one here. Um, but yeah, that is that one. It'll never happen again, sir. That those type of things, like when the pressure washer came and was washing our studio and the water started flying everywhere, like yeah. those type of things will never happen again. Well, there, but something similar will. And then that'll be the new right, one. Right. That'll be the new one. All right. This one says this is that's this one's entitled Talk to Tom. Hey, guys. Uh, this is Tyler, longtime BDM since 2015. Um, I wanted just a quick chance to talk to Tom on the phone. Um, I am about to finish a master's in small business management um, and system design, and I just wanted to give you guys some feedback on your small business, if you want it, of course, um, but try to give you some encouragement and give you my insight as I literally work for companies like Mazda, and uh, do internships for auto companies and companies that, even though bigger than yourselves, face the same type of problems you guys are facing. Is this the historian? <laughs> I think it is. It is the historian. Yeah, yeah. This but... guy's very mysterious. I love this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he calls in, he's always like, it's like he's super smart sounding, right? And I'll talk business with you, but it's got to be on the show. <laughs> because, uh, like in person? No, no, like you won't jump, or you're not going to jump on the phone. You'll do it in here. Well, I want to need content. Uh, okay. Because, All right. Because, that's fair. Because um, I've realized, and this I may think he not goes be... on to give his number. Yeah. So if you do want to talk to him, I can set that up. And this could be 100% wrong, and it could just be as easy as talking to as many smart business people as I can to, yeah. for us to get new ideas or whatever, but there is no, it's like winning the lottery. It's not, never going to happen. There is no one tried and true idea that was is going to change our business 
uh, for the better without an insane amount of hard work and dedication put beyond that idea, right? So it's less about the actual idea and more about the hard work, how hard you're going to work implementing whatever said idea is. Because sure. we come up with lots of ideas yeah. daily, and then it's the implementing those ideas. We also get the rid of most of our ideas. Because we we deem them not worth putting the work into it because it's not going to yield That's true. the benefit that we need the work you, to you yield. You need to work smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're it, currently trying to tighten up our workflows in here, stuff like that. What would you say are, like to answer his question, what would you say are our major problems here? Besides just the show in general not being good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? Well, okay, there, okay, this is one thing. Uh, how to grow, and all my questions are going to be impossible to answer, by okay. the way. So that I'm doesn't sure help. He'll love that. He'll <laughs> love that. Well, I'll tell the historian right now. What if he told you they're not impossible to answer? Well, okay. And that's your problem. You, you're, you're right. already talking yourself out of his you're, you're potential right. answer. I already know. That's what we are. Okay, so. Isn't that our problem most of the time? So you and I, we I'll tell know. you what yeah. we need to do. Here's our, how do we grow the listenership of the show and and therefore grow BDMs and yeah. grow people. So because with more listeners, we'll become more advertisers, we'll become more BDMs. Sure. We'll, we'll help the business grow, right? How do you do that? All right, one. Do as many uh, interviews on other shows as you can, right? Okay. Fill our schedule up with interviews. Work We're more. We're crushing that right? one. You know, uh, two, just work more about uh, gathering interesting interviews. All the things require an insane amount of work that we, you know, are trying to do, but there's a limit to the amount of time we have per day because there's also our families. Me and Daniel, if we didn't have families. We could be here 12 hours. Oh, I would be here 12 just hours. Just grinding it crazy. No, I would never leave here. Yeah, I doing would probably, interview after but, interview. What, get, why would I have a reason to leave here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd be drinking all the time. Oh, <laughs> my God. I'd be so drugs. Oh, so drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, so, and then we'd just be doing as many interviews as we could fit in a day. We'd yeah. be doing all this stuff. You know, and we'd probably have more listeners, right? And like we, I don't know. The more know. work does translate into more listeners. It, we, most be, of the time it does. We'd yeah. be doing more internet content. We'd be doing Twitch shows. Yeah, we'd be doing all this thing because we know what we need. We do. We but do. there's there's not enough time in the day to yeah, do it all, right? Not. And then so you got to pick. Well, what, then it becomes, you know, then it also becomes less fun. Too. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and that's we'll important. Ourselves to death. Yeah, we've been talking about that. Dude. We'll be yelling at it. We'll be hating each yeah. other. You know, what I'm and that's only I, happened a couple <laughs> times. You know, but it's but it's, it's a direct result of just grinding too hard. And you never know? hate. I, you said that. I never said that. No, no, I've no, never no, hated. No, 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 you hate. said that. I'm I'm saying what would you happen. Pick your words carefully with me. I hold on to that. You have to pick your words carefully with me. Andrea knows that. I analyze every word you say, and then even more than that, in the middle of the night, I'll wake up and reanalyze them. I'll make a three a.m. He said he hated. It. The uh, so it's kind of like we know what to do. We do. It's just not enough. And there is no secret. Oh, if you do this one thing, everything's gonna be solved. That doesn't exist. That's what the, do you think is most important? If I have one word. Consistency is the most important. I think. Yeah, I mean, you, because what we're doing now, we're trying to do the best at it. Uh, and but I would, you know, in all I don't honesty, think I, I will to talk the to the historian. Just email me; I'll give you. Yeah, my I number like him a lot. He's a good. In fact, I'd love to like on a side note. If you do talk to the historian, and I have his number, tell him that I would like to pick his brain a little bit about the amount of knowledge he has about our show. That's beneficial yeah, yeah, yeah. to me. Like I'll pay him to help me with some special projects of cu like curation of things that we want to do to make it easier for BDMs to check out the show. Yeah, yeah. We have so much content and here's the weird thing. I have all of it. Yeah. We're all the, of it. I have here, every single piece. There isn't a piece I don't have. Here's an idea that just takes a bunch of time to I could tell you a dozen Are you ideas. Are talking about the grandmaster list we want? Well, no, no, that's another idea we just don't have the time to do, but We want a master database where BDMs oh, yeah, go yeah. in and you have a search bar and you can literally type anything you want and based on notes and shows, it's all housed and you can pull up anything you want. Every single ACT ever done, every single OG, AMT, BDM, oh, yeah. special shows, Friday free show, bonus shows. Yeah, and it's all organized so you can go in there and search it. We were thinking about opening that up to like 1095ers as a, a benefit and you'll get a code to get in or whatever. And it's like, that is doable. Chat room wants to see the historian go on the cruise. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could put him in the library. <laughs> Why do they have the library on the cruise ship? 
For nerds? For poker, <laughs> right? Isn't it for poker? You, that's what I've only seen people play poker in the library. Yeah. You have the internet. You know There's why no I need never for wanted a to do that? What? This is going to be mean to our good friend Jimmy. I never wanted to do it because Jimmy would want to do poker games in there, and every time I'd pop my head in there, it was always old people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'd look at the poker room, and I was like, I don't want to be out here. I'm going to go out to the Lido <laughs> deck and look at uh, thongers. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you get older, you just I'm still you into fall thongers, into, dude. Uh, no. poker and smoking cigars. I'm still into thongers. Because your, uh, your B don't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what do you care about thongers? You know, it'll, it'll work for 30 to 80 seconds, <laughs> but then it just gets... Uh, like three fourths inflated, <laughs> <laughs> and then you get mad at it, <laughs> which is one of my favorite things when a whole man gets mad at his body parts for not working. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Okay. Um. Again, if you want to sign up to become a BDM, yeah. Tomanddan.com. There's registration right on the right hand side. Yes, sir. And there's uh, a love meter too. So depending on you know how much mild or wild, how, whatever you want to give us, we all take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we think you'll enjoy the show, and we'll see you at the big. BDM appreciation event. Yep. We'll see you tomorrow. Nice job, buddy. That was funny. Perfect. That was funny. All right. That's Thursday, 1 and 2, April 18th. Okay. And then we're just holding fast. And now we'll see if old Shaggy calls. I check my phone, too. Uh, What was it? Uh, April... I missed the date you said. Um, April 18th, tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with us uh, today, Twitch. We have hopefully Shaggy 2 Dope next. We'll see how that goes. I'm getting tired. All right, Jesse can come tomorrow too. So now we get a bunch of guests tomorrow. So I'm just getting them at 11:30 or 1:30. Yeah, tomorrow I think guys we're gonna have Jesse Wolf from Odang Hummus and this guy that I follow on Instagram, Mark called Sauce Stash. I don't know if you guys follow him. Uh, Jesse's actually the one that linked me up with him. Sauce Stash makes um, he makes artificial meat himself in his home. So he'll make like steaks or chicken breast or anything. He makes all kinds of crazy stuff and he makes it look like the food. And uh, he is a really, he's really active, uh, you know, influencer and streamer on YouTube. So that should be pretty fun. I'm excited about that one. I've been wanting to talk to that guy for a while. I don't see anything on my phone. And then what's that, buddy? Uh, Billy says, "Oh, he just got here." PR rep says Shaggy thinks everything's still on target for two p.m. Asked me to text their tour manager as a reminder. Any updates or any changes, I will let you know. Okay, cool. So it looks like uh, 10 minutes, so that gives me time to pee. Perfect. Awesome. And then all the damn guests, because uh, I also... Uh, Chubby, we use OBS. Um, I've looked into Streamlabs. <laughs> uh, maybe we need... Uh, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm open to anything. Um, but yeah, we use the original version of OBS, and it seems to you know do pretty well for us um 
we run it really, 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 really uh, bare bones, though. We don't use any other type of switcher other than a stream deck. I have two stream decks. I have a, um, well, here, I think I can show you. This thing plugs in. Here, let's see if I can show you. We got here, we got, we got those guys there. So I've got the stream deck set up with, most of these are everyday stuff we use. A couple of sound effects here in Spotify if we use that. And you can kind of see my setup here. It's just normal. There's a thing back there. But yeah, it's like a relatively normal deal. And we don't, we don't use any, I don't make anything go through anything extra. <clears throat> Some people do. I don't think we need that robust of a, uh, a deal. I, I, a lot of other, especially currently around here, people use like professional rigs. They're using like 4K cameras and digital SLRs. And they've got, um, I mean, we're using, again, like, look, look at this bullshit. We're using, we have Logitech's, just standard Logitech. What are these, C920s? I've got one Elgato face cam pro that we use for a guest because I can get a better res resolution. You can see we have our other face cams here that are pointed out. So we've got like couch cam is there. That's my camera. There's Tom's, Sam's cam. You can, or what was Sam's cam is down there in the corner. And then there's another one out in the lobby where Tom's at that we use, but they're like $50 webcams. I, I don't see the, I'm not sure I see the justification spending a thousand dollars on a camera <clears throat> when you know, we're not getting that. I think Tom would agree with this. If we were getting 2,000 people watching this every day and and then and then after the fact, 10,000 other people <laughs> like going and watching it, then maybe we justify spending more money on the cameras. But I can't justify spending thousands of dollars on something that can't even break 1K. Yeah, but maybe if we made it look better our numbers would go up. I uh, think about yeah, that, that too. Right? Yeah, that's a that's a, a that's a good point. You know, and I, I think about like I wonder if there's cheap ways Oh, there's uh, always cheap ways to make it look better. I have been uh looking around for like a audio video or really just a video person to come and consult with us because we do want to change our video setup get some new uh, video angles and just make it look better. Uh, all right, let me see what I'm gonna talk to old Shaggy about. Did I even write down here? Great man, okay. Jigolo. Can't even read what I wrote down. For Shaggy? Yeah, yeah. I can That's only why I type mine. I can only read my writing within twenty four hours. One time. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's that. like disappearing ink. <laughs> if disappearing it, thoughts. <laughs> if, it's, if it's not, I'm like, what did I even? But if it's if I wrote it down within the past couple hours, I'm like, I know it exactly what it says. But now, since I did this yesterday, I have no idea what I even wrote. Fuck you. <laughs> All right. Let me load some notes up. Here we go to second. Did 
I save that one? Where did we put that? That was Thursday, right? One and two? Um, Thursday one and two we just did, yeah. And this will be for Friday. We'll just put it as Friday one. We won't okay. even finish two. We'll just do Friday one. Okay, that works. <coughs> Tom did have a computer on his desk, but um, he wasn't really using it, so we just freed it up. Yeah, it was for for reading the chat room, but then we put it on there, and I never turned it on. Yeah, you were like, I don't <laughs> want to. <laughs> well, I, I did want to read the chat room, but maybe we'll put it back. Uh, you couldn't. Uh, you didn't figure out to turn the computer <laughs> on. It, it was because I we I turned it on the first couple days. I remember I, I had yeah. it on, but then I wasn't using it. It's also going to we be a distraction. I'm trying to not read the chat room as much. Yeah, it yeah. should be over here, right? Like, I should have it under my camera. So when I'm reading it, it looks like I'm looking into your eyes. Yeah, I cannot do the show and look at the chat room, and then uh, th that's impossible for me. So, but during the breaks, like when Daniel's in the bathroom, I could have, uh, you know. But we're going to get a big TV in here, bigger, a uh, big studio TV. And so once it's, uh, we get a big boy, Correct. I'll be able to read the chat room off the TV, and it'll be fine. Now we get a, a full day of guests tomorrow. The <laughs> every guest that we contacted um, replied back that they'll do it. That's good. I also have this counterfeiter. Um, that I've been trying to get on the show. This is totally random. Um, oh, yeah. I wanted to talk to that guy. So he sounds awesome. I'll tell you who it is. It's this guy named Arthur J. Williams. Um, Old Arthur J. And uh, he's a master counterfeiter turned world-renowned artist, writer, inventor, featured on uh, Forbes. Anyway, he... I. I ran into his content about like how he used to counterfeit money. Yeah. And then he just, now he just turned into an artist, like, you know, whatever. But, uh, the counterfeiting world is fascinating to me. Like, and then like mimicking all the tricks that the government uses to, uh, verify our currency. And then he, you know, he learned those and then, then trying to, he has a, a whole content about it, but then trying to, uh, take the fake money and, and then launder it into the world he and, was and get real money right? back, yeah. But yeah. but the like it was a it was a daily job to That's launder nuts. the fake money, yeah. Because you got to hit all these places that you know you know are not going to go into it too much. But the money I believe would pass like the fucking marker test and shit. And I think you made you made That's bills nuts. under a hundreds was the thing. So you had to you know I think he was doing like twenties and shit. So it's like you have to do a ridiculous amount of volume to be able to make anything like the, it's a full-time job just trying to get real money from the fake money right right and it, you know it, it, it's a whole thing i don't want to you know we're, we're hopefully gonna have him talk to him but that'll be fun <clears throat> but i think they get you for that one uh, government doesn't fuck around <laughs> You know, it's weird, though, like of all the crimes, like this seems uh, like the the most n nonviolent, you know, <laughs> because you're just uh, you're you're making the money and oh, you're no distributing it. That one, yeah. Now you are stealing money from all businesses and anybody you exchange your fake money with because you're essentially giving them valueless nothing to get back real money. But uh the you know like i said they'll get you it's our fucking counter i'm sorry i was distracted with these silly videos that bus decker and mo put out and i'm like oh. you you guys are adults <laughs> they're good they're good man he was using a he, chainsaw to cut a pizza in his house <laughs> unbelievable you, you make content you gotta do you just it. put out content he's doing it we're doing it daily, but we're just doing long, old timey yeah. uh, uh, audio uh, only. <laughs> we? Yeah, we see, we just leave the cameras on. We sit there like a yeah, fat yeah. animal. And How much content we do? Yeah. Three hours straight. 
<laughs> the, the people are like it's too much. Everybody wants fifteen what second videos. Doing? People hate this. One fifteen second video a day. We're like we're nah. like it's got to go back sometime. <laughs> we're like not out three and a half hours. That's what they want. That's funny. I couldn't go. I couldn't just do one fifteen second video a day. I could. Like it, I'll be like, "Where's it? You know, are Where's we gonna spend, <laughs> spend all day for one fifteen second <laughs> f- second rate? Like uh, just some shit to someone to scroll past?" Am I here? Oh no! What? Anybody else get a big ass screen printed square on their new PDM shirt? <laughs> oh, I already am. Yeah, I, oh, okay. I, I commented and told the guy to send me an email. We knew we knew it would be something. Well, I mean, there's bound to be a mistake, you know. Also, yeah. villain was cool enough to like, you know, hurry up, get these printed in a yeah. smaller amount yeah, of time, no, you know. know. So I was like, well, I know. And he he told me if any if there's a problem with any, yeah, he'll fix you know, all of it. Fine. So, and we have extras for that. So, if you it's have fine. a mistake, we'll send you a new one. And I told him, that. <clears throat> and then most people are like, "Nah, nah, it's fine." And nah, I'm like, nah, nah, I'm nah. like, "No, I feel bad because you, you know, even though it was a five dollar shirt." Man, um, why, if you really feel bad, <laughs> you wouldn't be saying that, then, you motherfucker. Why are you saying I'm, that? I'm joking. I mean, you should. They should. The five dollar part, you should weigh that in your mind. You didn't buy a thirty-five dollar. Uh, it's not thirty-five dollar. You know, it's not. I, I, I'm serious. It should. Yeah, weigh but everybody it, else got no one without the square. I understand <laughs> that, but you should weigh it in your mind. You shouldn't be launching off a uh, a bomb to somebody. I mean, you can ask. The question he asked was perfectly reasonable. Yeah, yeah, and he probably won't even ask me. But please, but normally, send like me what I email. would do though, just letting people know. And I'm not shaming anybody. I'm just letting you know what I would do. Okay, I'm uh. just letting people know. Am I saying it with uh, a, a certain level of importance? Yes. If you have this problem, why not message me? Show at TomAndDan.com. Why blast it to everybody else? You know good and damn well that if you put it in there, all you're doing is whipping the bees nest. You know that because <laughs> you're not an idiot. You're not an idiot. You're smart. He probably didn't want to bother you. Because he didn't an email's want a, never bothered. He dude. didn't want a new shirt. It's, no, but that's my job. I love getting people new shirts. It's my fucking job. Nothing makes me happier than oh, you got a ruined shirt. I fix a ruined shirt. Bam, I'm a hero. Yeah, Nothing makes me happier. It is than an that. easy fix for us. We just tell Eric. Uh, but the other hold, way, when you, you know, do the other way, when you go, hey, look at this. It. Hold on a second. Now you can get everybody else to go. They oh, yeah. might start looking like, at their shirt. Who else heard the F word on the radio? <laughs> yeah. What the what fuck the are you fuck? doing? Well, you guys well, I was heard... starting to type like, what God the fuck? Damn it. Then I realized I could take it down. Then I was like, ah, just leave it up. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, happened. like I even po- some guy on Reddit. He's like, oh, shit. Should I pull my post out on Reddit? I go, yes or no. <laughs> I said yes or no. I, I don't I don't care. Yeah. Right, right, right. But what I'm trying it? to make you guys smarter. I'm trying to listen to what I tell Maisie. Because Maisie will get mad when I do what I just did. I'll tell you the right way to do things. Yeah, yeah. Maisie will get mad. And I'll go, no, 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 you're not in trouble. No, wait, everything is fine. I'm just telling you the right way to do shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you have a problem with Cadillac, you drive a Cadillac, you got a brand new Cadillac, drove it off the lot, you get there and you don't have the mats in your trunk. They even put the mats in your trunk. Are you going to go online and blast it? Fuck Cadillac and these <laughs> mats. No. You're going to email Cadillac. You're going to be like, hey, Cadillac, I don't think the mats were in there. I don't think the, the guy put the mats in the yeah. back on my way home. Give him oh, a chance to make it right. No problem. Yeah. I'll get those mats right to you, sir. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, see what I'm saying? It's, yeah, just yeah. The, it's just the right way to do but shit. People, there is a right way to do shit. People love the blast. <laughs> they, <laughs> love the blast. <laughs> they love the blast. Because They love the blast. How can... Oh, it's dead. How can you get the sweet, sweet pity yeah. and the they camaraderie the Now, I'm also of, of giving attack. them a dose of yours. Do you see what I'm doing? Right? I'm it's giving, attack! Do you see attack what I'm doing? this guy! Do you see what I'm doing? What? I'm giving them a dose of what you're pro. Do you feel it right now? Am I giving you a semi? What? I'm shaming. I'm slightly shaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting a layer of frosting shame on the top for like, because there is a right way to do shit. Yeah, and then if Cadillac doesn't give you your mats and says, fuck you, then you oh, say- Oh, blast them good. Then you're like, oh, hey. Oh, blast their back out. I didn't get my mats, and, and Cadillac said, fuck me, so- So fuck Cadillac. Yeah, so fuck them and tell them, you know, then you're doing a People service. People are going to think we're talking about Cadillac Pat. <laughs> no, we're not talking about it. I don't know why I picked Cadillac. <laughs> But it's a weird thing to I'm go. I'm getting old. I want a Cadillac. To go public with it first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe not in the BDM group, though. See, I don't want to villainize anybody. Maybe you just feel like you can go there because that's your place. And then but they're amongst I don't friends. Know. But also, to me, maybe I just, he just, just semi correctly assumed. Cut that to the chase. Just go right to me. Every shirt had a big 
square iron uh, well, they, do. they do they do and what you've done sir you made everybody look at their shirt and now they know they're all <laughs> shitty <laughs> It was your fault. You're the now one. that I know yeah, we were selling, <laughs> we were going to pull the biggest prank in the history of the show. Yeah. We were going to give everybody, all the yeah. mediums, five dollars shitty yeah. shirts where they're printed <laughs> shittily. Yeah, these are like, all the defects yeah. from oh, uh, this prior is all years. Mark Villain's <laughs> trash. It's all trash. He got it out of the dumpster. I was like, just watch him. It's fine. And print over it. They're like, oh, he's got this. These have bed bugs. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Just print over. Them. Does anybody use a uh, shirt have bed bugs? Like that? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put that. I'm gonna put that. Shaggy's never gonna call, right? <laughs> Mr. Lava Lava. That Shaggy? Did he Mr. say? La- hey, look, can I do Shaggy? Mr. Oh, he's calling. Oh, he's home. Can I be heard you? Hello, Tom and Dan. Yep. This is Tom. Um, I do not know the gentleman's name, but um, he, I think, was a publicist of some sort. Or I think he was actually on the road with Shaggy at the time because he said he was going to be in Canada. Oh, okay. That's not possible. You're a liar. This is all falling apart again. This may not happen. You guys get the secrets now. Okay, no problem. They think she- they think Tom's a juggalo because the way he talks. The lady thinks that they're talking to Big L.A. Is everything okay? <laughs> yeah, Grady, I know that. He was in the Army. I think he was in Desert Storm. And then all the guys told him he was a good reggae artist, and I think it came out of that, and that's how he got signed. I have to poop. I have to poop too. Oh, the cease. The oh, the the rep is going is confused because she is going. She is confused as to who rescheduled this for two p.m. today. Hello? Well. It's not on us. That's on you guys. Tom and Dan. Yes, it is. Yep. How you doing, Shaggy? Uh, good. I'm going to put you on hold, and then we'll start the interview in 15 seconds. All right. Hold on one second. I believe it's on line one. Okay. Oh, second one now. Shaggy, can you hear us okay? Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. All right, let's do this. Here we go. In three, two. Welcome to a corporate time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. And let's get right into it, man. Yep. Uh, he's on the line with us right now. Uh, me and Daniel have personally wanted to talk to this gentleman for a long time. A very long time. Some would say that the business acumen that him and his partner have have inspired what we've done independently. He's going to be at Welcome to Rockville Music Festival, Daytona Beach International Speedway in Do- Daytona on May 9th, 2024. On the line with us right now is... Shaggy Two Dope from the Insane Clown Posse. What's going on, man? What's going on, fellas? So, Shaggy, I want to ask you because I, I really do feel like a professor, a marketing professor from a university, could do an entire lecture about ICP and their ability to, their ability to market themselves. And what you yeah. guys have done uh, throughout the years is really brilliant and i'm wondering how deliberate that was were you cognizant of how good the marketing of what your band and icp have done throughout the years or was it well, just you're doing it and then it ended up being great marketing it's it's, it's crazy because first you gotta understand that that all of us involved were like uh very early high school dropouts and <laughs> and all that stuff nobody went to college none of that um and we just the reason I think the reason why we learned to sell and uh, push it so hard was because um, because when we were local in Detroit, all the other bands and all the other uh, rappers, everybody they 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 would always lie to us about the numbers that they were selling yeah. and the numbers about like the merchandise they were pushing. 
So that just always made us work 10 times harder. You know what I mean? Sure, and yeah. We didn't even know the whole time. We were outselling everybody, but we thought we, we, we weren't selling shit compared to everybody else, but we were smoking everybody. And I think we just kept that same uh, uh, mentality once we went national, once we, you know, started signing the labels and all that, because we were just so used to that same work ethic, you know. And I, I, on top of that, we just always did things from a fan's perspective, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. well, what, what would I want to buy from somebody, you know? And how would I want to see it? So it, It's also surprising, too. It's interesting to hear that because I, I really didn't know your educational background at all. But I was always surprised at how you guys would pop up on the radar doing things before other people were doing them. Tom and I remember working in radio years and years ago where we'd pop on the Internet and go to, like, y'all's website and see that you were doing streaming shows before people. You were integrating, like wrestling before people like you were doing like hybrid events you were doing live events that were independently funded like how did you keep your i guess thumb on what was popular or how did you were you, how were you able to pull people in that knew how to edit and stream before other people were doing it because it's really pretty amazing that you guys were sort of on a forefront our our our, our whole thing since our beginning was not knowing how to do anything you know what i'm saying so everything has been like hands-on yeah finding the people that know how to do whatever specifically you need them to know how to do. So sometimes if we were doing something like back in the day we, were, we when we were streaming before people had podcasts and all that, yeah. it's like we probably have like five people. One person will figure out how to get the broadcast out. One person will figure out the technical shit with the equipment. One per, You know what I'm saying? So we just find people and bring them together as a team and do it, you know. And on top of that, uh, uh, we go broke doing it. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. No, I mean, nothing was lucrative. So we, we just we we basically did all the things that we just want to see, like as as fans of other people, what we wanted to see them do, you know. But uh, but because of the lack of, I guess, I guess, uh, business and finance background, sure. Uh, it's just like we just we just spend a lot of money on everything with no return on it, you know. Yeah. But that's okay, you know, because because to me it's like I'm in a, convo- uh, a, a, a position where I'm comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So it's just like it's it's not about the money when you love what you do, you know. But Shaggy, I'm curious because like when speaking of branding and like. I know uh, a handful of our own listeners that have hatchet men tattoo. My, oh my brother God. had a hatchet man yeah. tattoo. And uh, so, like, just a global brand. Just that icon was a great choice that people uh, grabbed a hold of and used. And was that just happenstance? Or did you look at, the, like, how much thought was even put into that? To, to the actual hatchet man logo? Yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely none. I actually drew that at a when we were sitting at a restaurant, waking, waiting for a studio session. I, I drew it basically on a napkin, like that that old story, you know, yeah, just yeah. like ah, oh, let's see, let's try this. Because originally, um, I thought of the design because there was a uh, there was a, a paper boy in my neighborhood, and we should call him the Mad Paper Boy because he was just out of his fucking mind. He was like a heavy metal kid, okay. and he just like he just like eat <laughs> bugs and like throw rocks through windows and shit on his route and all that shit. And uh, so we started calling the Mad Paper Boy. So originally, uh, we called it Mad Paper Boy Records, and so I kind of modeled it off of, off of him. That's why the hair is all ratted out and shit, because that's how his hair looked. Yeah. But then, uh, but then you know, then through whatever process, we was like, okay, Psychopathic Records. So we kept that. Put a you know, put a meat cleaver, which for some reason got called a hatchet eventually, in his hand. And um, yeah. And that, so, I mean. But it's it all was cor- just a it's- fucking. It was just a. It was a drawing on a napkin that then got drawn on a poster board that then got sent to get in the put on a back of cassettes when we were pressing them. You know? Yeah, it, it, it's that simple. Like d- d- it, it's funny to think that you you did it. It was organic. Has there ever been anything you guys have tried? maybe to push too hard and you knew it wasn't authentic and you didn't do it or like, because it does seem like you guys choose things on just like, it's gotta, yes. it's gotta be organic. There, yes, there has been, you know, the funny thing is, and I think this happens with a lot of people is, uh, is, um, when you, well, maybe not so much in the pop world, but when you try to make a radio hit a radio song, like for us, yeah, it just turns out horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. Our very, on our very first like full length record, kind of carnage, we did this song, that we, because we didn't know anything from anything when we were back then, so we were like, okay, we're gonna try to make a radio song, and so basically we just didn't curse in it. We thought that was a radio song. The song was called "Guts on the Ceiling." You know, I'm sure they wouldn't have played that regardless. You know, it was about a guy <laughs> shooting his head and splattering his guts all over the ceiling. Yeah. So like, 
you know, regardless, that wasn't going to make it on no radio. But, you know, we just were like, no cussing in it. it you know, it'll get played. But uh, there's been a couple things like that. Like, there was this thing called um, Chronicles of a Dark Carnival. This, this one uh, production company made, um, uh, I think it made a, ran on a sci-fi channel. They are shooting for it or something. But it was just like little stories uh, that they filmed from, like, our songs and stuff. And they made the little short stories. Kind of like tell us from the dark side or yeah. something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was just horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we were just like, yeah, get that out of here. You know, because yeah, it, it was like... You got to fail, though, right? Like, you got to try stuff, and if you don't like it... Charlie's the best teacher, man. Yeah, you just laugh at it and, and move on. Yeah, I get it. Well, sometimes you cry at it. We've we've had... we In our career, we've had... Uh, I don't know how the fuck we did it, man. It's like we had blow after blow that would probably end most people's careers. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just shitty stuff that would happen to us. And instead of just giving up, though, we're just like, yo, you just can't stop, you know? Like, the whole fucking... FBI thing, you know, that's why people don't have hatchet mans in their cars and stuff like that no more because you get considered a gang member if you have that stuff. That's why Hot Topics and Spencer's dropped our shit immediately as soon as that stuff came up, you know, because if that insignia now to a lot of police in America means that you're in a gang, you know what I'm saying? And, and, so, I did not yeah. know that. Tom told me that yesterday. Yeah. He he showed me the and, and we're gonna we were gonna load up the documentary. There's a documentary you can watch about that. Yeah, right? called the United States of Insanity, and it came yeah. out in uh, 2021. And can you speak about that for a minute? Because uh, I remember uh, when this all came out. I remember seeing the media about it, and then you guys, uh, you know, being a lot, you kind of. Going back and saying, what the, you yeah, know, yeah. why are you classifying uh, jugglers as a gang? And then that became a media story that, oh, if you're the jugglers are now uh, classified as a gang from the FBI. So, how much did that affect you guys? It affected us greatly. Um, it, 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 it first came out in 2011. It was like the, the National Gang Assessment List or something like that. And it was like the top 10 gangs, like, you know, Bloods, Crips, MS-13, Aryan Brotherhood, whatever, you know, all the prison gangs, all yeah. that. Juggalos were on it. And it was just like, what the fuck? You know, so at first, when it first came out in 2011, we were like, oh, that's 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 kind of badass. <laughs> you know right, saying? right. But but then but then the fallout started happening, all the repercussions. Um, when when you're on it, when, when, when you're on a gang list like that, and let's say... Um, all the charges are trumped up. You know what I'm saying? You get pinched with weed, all of a sudden it's a gang member with weed. So, right. you know, you get charged harder. People were getting denied into the uh, armed services. People were losing custody uh, fights with their kids simply because they had a hatchet man tattoo because they were considered gang members and not fit parents, you know, even though. And then, you know, you got like little kids that live in the middle of grassland, Missouri, you know what I'm saying, who go to the mall to buy an ICP shirt from Hot Topics because there's no other outlets anywhere within a billion mile radius of their house. And let's say their mom's speeding on the way home, they get pulled over, this kid's wearing a shirt, he's treated as a gang member. You know what I'm saying? Little Jimmy Beaver from Grasslands, Iowa. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I know it's now It's now in the same boat as an MS-13 gang member who's murdered people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's crazy. Sounds yeah. like a so huge like, waste of did, money and funds. Did, did and you find all these All these major outlets dropped all of our shit. You know what I'm saying? Um... And that, that was whatever, you know what I'm saying? But what really got us was, was I hate to say discrimination, like it's like some big racial thing from back in the day, but like but like the profiling and all that, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like no shit. People were getting fucked up it, legally, you know what I'm saying, for, for being a juggalo. And there, basically we were sitting back and there was nothing that we could do about it. So we were like, all right, fuck this. We're going to organize a march on Washington. So we actually... <clears throat> did a show on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in front of that, that pool thing in the National Mall or whatever yeah, it's yeah. called. The reflection We did part, a show yeah. right there, and then we marched. Well, we marched then to this show. So it, I don't know what the turnout was, but it was pretty fucking great. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was a lot, a lot of motherfuckers came out, and, and we did the whole march thing, you know? And, you know, I don't know. It wasn't, like, necessary to get put off it because we ended up trying to sue them to get our name off of there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We had all these organizations working for us for free and shit but i mean we we're we we're dumping millions into it you know what i'm saying and um and we ended up <clears throat> get, ended up getting thrown out of court after like i don't even know how many years but uh so basically uh they never they, they just don't come out with it no more that that gang assessment list they just stopped coming out with it but they never went back and said our bad 
you weren't supposed to be on there or never never apologized or nothing for it. They just left it where it was at. You know what I'm saying? So so now and the whole the whole reason for doing that is is, is like these little towns with police forces that are like underfunded. They can now say that they have juggalos in their town, and that's a gang, and they get extra funding and extra money to combat their gang problem. So they buy their new cars and their new billy clubs or whatever they need to buy, you know. Sure. So it's a, it's, it's a it's a big money thing too, you know what I'm saying? I and, never thought about and, that, but yeah, you could prop up your funding that way yeah, by saying you have a high concentration. Yeah, of these I mean, guys. It, it just that's the story of our career, though. If there's any like fucked up thing that can happen, it always happens to us, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that makes it stronger. So we're like, whatever, man, you know. Well, so, I, I was sure. gonna ask you, Shaggy, because it as much of a pain in the ass as that was for you guys, and the amount of money you spent to try to fight it it some part of you must have thought like man we got to the point we got so popular and so big and there's independently so, independently i think it's important that you have and, to stress independently and we've got such engaged followers that the fbi put our <laughs> our listeners on the goddamn yeah. top gang list in the entire country you know what i i think you are like the first person to ever like look at it that way you know what i'm saying but yeah you're right you know what i'm saying but like it's like all all the all the repercussions from it were so outweighing like like that that i never even thought about it like that you know what i'm saying it's also I remember cool back though. in the day yeah. i remember back in the day nwa the rap group nwa got a letter from the fbi for fuck the police yeah. they got a letter from it saying don't do that you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying i'm like we're like god damn man we we got fuck a letter shit they came after our our fucking fan base, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People, yeah your fan base are put into jail and have extra charges because of you. But it's also a little <laughs> trolly that you guys, I think, get the last laugh in that the people they're trying to jail, you know, Jimmy Beaver that he was talking about, yeah. dressed like a clown. <laughs> Which I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. It's yeah. Ultimate Troll. Ultimate well, Troll. Clown style. So, uh, Shaggy, I'm curious, too, and I've always wanted to ask you this. How much have you affected the company Fago? <laughs> oh, that's a great man. Oh man! <laughs> so, uh, fuck, man! It, it, it's even hard to put into words. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, 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 we have got them sales coast to coast, like insane. It's in places that it would never would have been in. It's like. Well, even when we come to town, like stores that never even fucking have it, they just order it out of state from from <laughs> there. All that, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, and we get absolutely no acknowledgement from them whatsoever. If we do get acknowledgement, it's it, it it's uh, yeah, we don't associate with them. That's what they say. They say that uh, our 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 product is for family consumption, and that's what we'll say. That's it. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing. We don't, we don't get a discount. We don't get nothing. We don't get. Oh man, we, you'd have your we, own we, flavor. If I own that thing, you'd have a flavor. Oh, you'd yeah. have a whole. You'd have. Oh my god. I, I take that back. We do get a discount because we buy it in such big bulk when we go on the road <laughs> that we get like the normal store <laughs> discount for buying such a massive amount. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I mean, because but yeah, they, they 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 for for whatever reason they don't want to be associated with us whatsoever. Which is great because uh, Shaggy, I remember god, w- when I was in uh, eighth gr- and ninth grade. I remember listening to you guys and being like, I grew up in Miami and then have Fago yeah, in Miami. Man. No, and then we I didn't have it in Delan. I was like, where can I get Fago? I remember people look like telling oh, you. I yeah, busted my ass to they, get Fago. They sell it in Georgia. Like people were <laughs> trying to find Fago because yeah. of you guys. And I'm like, this must have been an insane, lucrative and You insane. know what? You can find it in a lot of those fucking places now. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. of all the requests. It's insane, you know? Yeah, but yeah. they're just like, nah, they don't exist. You, <laughs> no, they did wow. nothing for you, us. You probably made them millions of dollars. Like, oh, th- 30 no years? Shit. Yeah, there's no yeah, doubt. It, the thing is, we're well aware of that, but unfortunately, you know, they, whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah, I they, know. They, Shaggy, they, they, they won't have it. Shaggy, I just want one last question because Tom and I were obsessed with it, the, the Gathering of the Juggalos, the original, the first one, was, was that in 2000? Um, it was 99 or 2000. I forget which one. So, so I want to say 99, but I might be wrong. How big has it gotten? Because, you know, quickly, because I know we're running out of time, but like it started like what, like a couple thousand, five thousand, ten thousand? Uh, it's, it started with a few thousand. Yeah, it was actually at a convention center and we did all like the shows and all that in the parking lot with a, with a stage that was built. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's just got to the point now where it's like a whole, it's like a whole uh, festival, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Where 
it runs 24 hours, you know what I'm saying, no matter what time of the day or night. It has you're... a map. It has a f- effing map, dude. Yeah, like oh, it's yeah. got a map. Yeah, maps. There's events everywhere. Um, it's awesome. I, I don't know what the total was last year, but there, it's, 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 it's thousands upon thousands of people, and, and uh, it's the most diverse fucking uh, musically. It's the most diverse shit on a, that, that I've ever heard of, you know what I'm saying? Everything from Bobby Brown to fucking Mushroom Head to fucking <laughs> us to, I mean, you name it, we we we. <laughs> We we've had it, and then we got wrestling. We've had every name in wrestling there is. It's it's just it's it's, it's insane. It's like it's like uh, organized insanity. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was gonna ask you about that because you've had f- huge acts, mega acts, at the gathering the of the biggest Juggalos. of all genres. And uh, and is it hard sometimes because some acts are standoffish and we're playing the gathering? Uh, do, do some people like, or they, you know, they just want to get in front of. You're a super engaged audience. Well, good, yeah. Here goes here goes the thing. It's 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 a tough it's a tough crowd to play in front of if you don't know who you're playing in front of. You know what I'm saying? Some people will get out there and uh, you know, whatever. Like uh, it's close. Like it's been close to Columbus in the, in the last few years. You know what I'm saying? So people get out there and they're like, "Yo, what up, Columbus?" They're gonna get shit thrown out and get booed off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, because right. It's not Columbus, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's such a small part of like people that may even be there. And there's just certain things, you know, if you don't understand, like when people are chanting family, people don't know what that is, and they get offended by, oh, what the fuck this family shit is. Right, like, you know, right. And stuff like that. It, it, you know, it's just, it, I won't call them protocols, but there's just, you know, just, just kind of look into what you're getting into if, you, if you're playing there. And it's not a problem because people show so much love on the other spectrum of it that it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? It's, if, if you just go out there and understand who you're playing to, you'll get accepted and motherfuckers will love you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love it, man. I, I got one last question for you, Shaggy, and I wonder if you ever thought about this because I have a lot. Ever since, you know, it's funny, me and Daniel heard you on Adam Carolla. Yeah. He, I mean, must have been t- more than 10 it years ago. It was like ago. 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I say that was a while ago. Yeah. 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 But, well, but, I was inspired when you guys were talking about the van with the tapes and you're just like pushing your music. Yeah, you know? and then I realized, like, man, these guys are straight up hustlers. They work hard. <laughs> they work hard. And, they, work hard. and, uh, and they, they built this amazing uh, following. And uh, so I'm, I'm curious, do you think you'd have the same success if there was social media and the internet when you guys started, mm. because I remember, you no, know, we we think about that a lot because like we came up when when that what didn't exist, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it was all print based, you know what I'm saying? You had to fucking print up samplers, you had to make flyers, you had to get them in hands, so you had to go out and physically do things, you know what I'm saying? You had to drive to different cities and promotional vans and hit the high schools and hit the clubs and press up as many as you needed, you know what I'm saying, which all that takes money and blah, 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 and put them under windshields of, you know, on the windshield wipers, uh, amusement parks everywhere, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it's not like that today. You know what I'm saying? Now you just click a button, you know what I'm saying? You can make the flyer on your phone. You can make a fucking video on your phone. So it, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I I wouldn't actually know how to start from scratch nowadays, you know, because it's so it's so like the work ethic is so different now than it was then. You know what I'm saying? I think it can be easier if you know what you're doing with the shit, you know, because you just got instant access to everybody. Back in the day, you had to press something up, you had to get it to a distributor, you had to do consignment, and get in the stores. Yeah. Or nobody hear your shit. You couldn't just throw it up on on iTunes. You know what I'm saying? Or Spotify. You couldn't do. There's no format like that. So you know, you have potential to, to, to nowadays for more ears to hear it instantly, as long as you like attach it to like something visual or, or something that people want to see. You know what I'm saying? Or you know what I'm saying? So that way. They're like, oh, what's this? Let me check this out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and so, there, yeah, and there's also the mystery because I remember when I was younger that I couldn't find information about you guys because well, there was no better. internet. I think it made yeah. it better. So yeah. when the great Malenko came out, it was like th- this uh, legend of like, oh, there's coming out with the series. Yeah. Like, and they're like, who are these guys in the makeup? And like, no <laughs> one knew. It. And the mystery yeah. almost it drove. It added to it. Yeah. It added to it. When now, and the, you, because you right. couldn't look it up on the internet. So yeah, you, 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 you can't do shit like that no, nowadays, you know, because we were just talking about this yesterday, me and one of my, my one of my boys, um, uh, he was like, man, you should go back to, like, you know, not letting people take pictures and all that shit again. I'm like, dog, there's already so many on the Internet. You yeah. can't do that no more, you know. The one cool thing is, though, because, like you said, with the whole, like, 
because we were streaming back in the day. We didn't know what podcasts were and all that. You know what I'm saying? If we would have kept going with that, you know, till nowadays, who knows where that would have been. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I stream like crazy now. I got podcasts, uh, the Shaggy shows, I, I, I put everything on there. But I just wonder like where it would be at if I would have kept consistently doing it from back in the day till now, you know what I mean? Oh, there's no telling. I mean, Florida like, Bennett. you guys are, like, early 2000s, the first person I, I saw that were really giving videos for your merch. I remember this video I stumbled upon, upon that was almost like you guys were doing, like, a QVC or, like, a home shopping network, and, and <laughs> yeah. you're just you're just screwing around and being funny and showing all your new merchandise, and it was working. There were people live, like, buying all the stuff, and I was like, these guys, like, are low-key geniuses. <laughs> like, yeah, it was vlogging. It was vlogging before vlogging was a thing yeah, right? yeah yeah i remember the video it was years and years and years ago and i told tom about it. i was like they were no they were doing a live stream they had the full outfits on and they're showing all their merch and their cds and all the stuff they're selling and now it, it was before it was even like a thing man but Shaggy, yeah at least it's a spoof like dumbass like like infomercials and shit <laughs> it's funny though it, it works man it works hey we can't wait to see you at uh, welcome to rockville in daytona thank you so much for the time today safe travels i i appreciate you rearranging to make it today and please thank your entire team for doing this it means a lot to oh, us of man. course man i appreciate it and, and, and we're looking forward to, to uh play rockville like crazy man it's gonna be a lot of fun hell yeah man awesome. well take care of yourself and uh, we hope to talk to you again sometime soon all right thank you for your time fellas all, all right, right man take care see ya very nice man. Yeah. Shaggy too dope from ICP. Yeah, uh, yeah. Somebody called him Shaggy too fresh in the chat room, <laughs> and I uh, like that. It um, very nice man. Yeah, like if you just look what they were able to do outside mainstream media, it, because that's where you know they had to operate outside. It's easy to sit back and make fun. Okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, I, and it just just shelve that for a second, and, and, and we've done, you indulge know, Tom and I for a second as small no. business owners. If you look at these guys and see what they've done independently yeah. with entertainment. Yeah, without the backing have, of giant corporations. Yeah, you have to. They do it their way. They say everything they want to say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like it's yeah. it's insane. It's a it's an insane yeah. tale. Yeah, I mean. And, it's a wonderful, insane <laughs> business story. It's a crazy it business story. It is. It is. Sometimes yeah. I sit and I talk to you about what we're doing here, and I don't understand it. And then I look at what they're doing, yeah, yeah. and I know they feel the same way. Like, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of small business owners would go and look at, I don't care about the music. Take that aside, whatever. Yeah. You just look at their business and what they've done and how hard they work. Yeah. And just look at that. Look at the engagement the audience, their audience has is insane. You know what I'm saying? Like their I audience, wonder what that they'll is. They'll spend hours painting their face. What going, is that? You know, like, Without making fun of it, what is you, that? Well, I, I read something, and I've, I've seen there's been other documentaries that have referenced ICP and stuff, and, like, they really tapped into basically the forgotten youth uh, or the forgotten people of America. Mm -hmm. uh, the people, I the mean. The disgust does. I, I Politically, there's people that have tapped into this too, and you know, there's no different. And then, yeah, so, and, yeah, and, then yeah. and, and then you have like, uh, all right, the, I'm not represented, and ICP is representing me. I, <laughs> the chat room's you know, reminding me of something like, hilarious. I'm a poor POS, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like yeah, them. Just, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then they're like, you're just like me. And then now yeah. uh, they've gotten stinking rich off of, you know, like uh, if you start looking up or just, uh, you know, going back to the business, uh, they've done well. Uh, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. and but but they really did stay true and they never, you know, like they just no. did it their own way. And it's pretty impressive. Right? I was listening to Shaggy's, uh, you know, it's not my thing. You know, I mean, it's great, but no. it's not my thing. No. I was listening to his uh, his new uh, newest album this morning and it is it's the formula. It's exactly the same stuff. And it's fine. If yeah, you like yeah. that, it's great. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's your thing. Uh, Kupo in the I think it's no DJ Axis in the chat room says and I forgot about this says Howard Stern would flip out. Uh, when he, when they were on the show because they would curse so much. I remember that. Yeah, he yeah, would yeah, always yeah. get so mad. At I forgot that. My, <laughs> yeah. Daniel, I didn't even I'm think about, about that. that. Uh, then I was you, like, I figured we... it out. I, th I do blame you, though, for this one. Uh -huh. Because when you were talking to him and everything, and you're like, Tom and Dan, the podcast. And I'm like, oh, no. He said podcast. Yeah. I wonder if that's what did it. It, uh, it doesn't matter. I'll cut it all out. And he sounded uh, like he was free flowing. So I didn't want yeah, to. I enjoyed <laughs> it. I wouldn't say anything to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I gotta, uh, I gotta send this to AI. Anyway, uh, I hope we just let's just air this unedited. Yeah, on the yeah, radio. Let's do it. <laughs> and, and then like, and I could just say I tried. Yeah, yeah like uh, maybe he's already not friendly with the government, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. maybe the FCC. Tom will and Dan get had a gang member on their show. It was cursed crazy. <laughs> all right, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with more corporate time. All right. Very nice guy. So that is a lot of edits, though. Yeah, God. Fine. I can do it. 
Um, sorry about I that. I can do it. Not fine. It'll be fine. Like it. Uh, where's that gun? My Friday one. Friday one. All right, glad I worked. These it, uh, <laughs> okay. I'll tell the uh, April. You want to come back and tell that, or is it not something we can talk about? Um, I'll just tell Twitch. Well, no, like Billy was. I told them already that Billy said they were trying to figure out who rescheduled it. it yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the first yeah. person that called me, they're like, "This is uh, this is CC, uh, you know, ICP's publicist." They're like, "Who'd you speak to yesterday that rescheduled this?" And I'm like, "I, I don't know. It was some dude." <laughs> so, yeah, why, oh, why would we know? he sounded like a juggler <laughs> but i realized but my, I, I was I'm like a real that dick about stuff like that. it's good that you got right. the call because i would have been like um cc that's not our problem it's not my problem to know who on my team did something that's right. what i would say I'm you like, want us to control your team i'm like i'm pretty sure it was a juggalo that was on the bus <laughs> <laughs> and uh he said he said one of your juggalonians <laughs> he said hey <laughs> we're gonna reschedule right, this tomorrow and then uh so then uh i said they said they're gonna call me tomorrow and then and then the other person and then uh, they that person she's like i'm gonna get to the bottom of this oh and then no, she put that's me on never, hold that's never and then it went to a busy signal then the other call came in it was shaggy he's like it's shaggy i'm calling <laughs> he's like uh, oh is that lady gonna call us back i don't and, care and like, here's shaggy and then, like, do it again. Do it all, shaggy do this one clean <laughs> do it all over again <laughs> all right do you want to finish this we, I mean, we can or we can, we can do it you tomorrow. Could, you could, we tell that story. Okay. You, yeah, you yeah, want right. to just tell the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we could just talk about scheduling interviews okay, and how it's hard. I'm not trying to make us work more, but no, no, we might as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're already doing it. Might as well do I it. I got nowhere to go. It'll make it easier for me. Ooh, Ghost of a New Bull with a hardcore uh, 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 psychopathic ref records reference. Twisted called and said there was a calendar conflict. Remember Twisted? Twisted was another like a uh, clown core or not clown core, but clown like what do mm. they call that? Murder rap. He was in their crew. I think there was a their Twisted was a group. Oh, there okay. was like a couple guys. Were Cottonmouth Kings loosely related to? I'm sure they got uh, a new guy know, called. We forgot to ask him if he knew Mike Busey. I'm sure he does. Oh yeah, he does. They were probably calling from his bus. It's probably Mike that rescheduled the interview. Although I'm afraid of hurt like. If I did, it's like, you know Mike Beasley, right? And he's like, who? And then, I'm, and then that would ruin, then, my, then all night you think about <laughs> yeah, what you I'm did like, to Mike Beasley, you well, dick. Yeah, yeah, because then I would think about, like, Mike eventually hearing that and thinking that he was, for, like, it. even though this is not completely made up, but then I was like, I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. I wonder if I can get ChatGPT to talk like a juggler. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can. Because you, can, you know how you can give it a tone? It won't understand. You don't think that, so? Because yeah. that's not a thing. I want it to role play as a juggalo and use real terms and talk like a rapper. You don't think that'll work? Well, it'll understand talk like a rapper more than like a juggalo. It, it absolutely knew. It's using their catchphrases, you dipshit. Oh, really? It's better than you. I don't even need you anymore. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, a, like, it doesn't know it what a juggle is. It knows all of it. <laughs> it's, like, it, 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 no, dude, it's the entire check internet. Check this out. Check it's this all out. human Listen. information. Yo, ever. Dan. What's up, fam? We're going to kick it juggalo style today. Much clown love. Let's get wicked. All right, here's the rundown. Whoop. That's our call. Straight up family vibes. Fagar, drink of choice. Splash it up at the shows. Get soaked. The gathering, that's where we unite. Mad love, mad music, mad fun. Face paint, rocking those insane clown looks, identity on full display. Hatchet Man, the iconic logo, symbol of our tribe. Now we spit it real, rhyme like life's a beat. Keep it raw, keep it juggalo. Got love for the game, love for the crew. What's up? You want to roll with this? Let's lay down some tracks, paint up, and rep the family right. Whoop, whoop, <laughs> whoop, whoop. This motherfucker's cooler than you, dude. Fucking hard drive way cooler than you. <laughs> All right, well, let's come back and uh, whoop, whoop. and let's play that. Okay. All right, here we go in three, two, 
Welcome back to a corporate time. Okay, Daniel. I just made you mad. Asked AI to talk like a juggalo, and then I was like, it's not going to know that. No, uh, I said, do you? <laughs> I asked you the question nicely, because uh-huh. I'm nice to you. I asked you the question nicely as your friend. Uh-huh. I said, I'm going to make chat GPT talk like a juggalo. Do you think it can do that? And you're like, it can't do that. Yeah, it doesn't understand talk like a juggalo. Uh, yeah. you know. So I put it in, uh-huh. and 11 seconds later, <laughs> this is what pops out. Yo, Dan. What's up, fam? We're going to kick it juggalo style today. Much clown love. Let's get wicked. All right, here's the rundown. Whoop. That's our call. Straight up family vibes. Fagar, drink of choice. Splash it up at the shows. Get soaked. Get soaked. The gathering. <laughs> that's where we unite. Mad love. Mad music. Mad fun. Mad fun. Face paint. Rocking those insane clown looks. Identity on full display. Hatchet man. The iconic logo. Symbol of our tribe. Hell yeah. Now we spit it real. Rhyme like life's a beat. Keep it raw. Keep it juggalo. Got love for the game, love for the crew. What's up? You want to roll with this? Let's lay down some tracks, paint up, and rep the family right. Whoop, 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 whoop. It even did a strangely excited <laughs> whoop, whoop at the end. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a robot yeah. whoop, whoop. No, that was, was a like, human whoop. <laughs> yeah. That was a juggalo whoop. That had emotion That in whoop it. was so good that, yeah, yeah. That, that people in the Walmart right up that here turned around. <laughs> and were, People in Walmarts all yeah, across yeah, Orlando. I heard like, my call. What the hell? I think a computer did. Ah! <laughs> I That's mean, crazy, yeah. right? That's Hard Drive, our intern. <laughs> we have an intern. We have a robot AI so intern named Hard Drive. It just picked up every juggalo saying. Okay, I'll say, it didn't even screw uh, it up, which is crazy. Stay as a juggalo. Like, and <laughs> answer Tom's questions in character. Now give it a question and I'll uh, ask it any question. We could have just interviewed this guy instead of Shaggy Tudor, <laughs> right? We could have just said, like, pretend you're Shaggy Too Dope. Um, well, I was going to ask uh, Shaggy Too Dope about his wrestling okay. career okay. and Let's if he's going to ever wrestle again. Um, okay, tell us about, uh, let's see, uh, the insane clown posse <laughs> and wrestling. What's that all about? All right, and it's gonna stay in character now, so <laughs> just prepare yourself. All right, and it, it's it's talking to me right now. I can't get it to read until it's done. That is one flaw that I found. I wish it would like on the phone read version. Read real time. On the phone version, you can have full on conversations with it, like okay. it'll just go. But in the the this one, okay, it's ready. Here we go. Mm. Eight. Here we go, fam. The insane clown posse, ICP. That's Shaggy, Too Dope, and Violent J. Them dudes are more than just rappers. They straight up wrestling fanatics, yo. Back in the day, ICP started showing up in wrestling rings all over, from local joints to big time stages like WWF, now WWE. They even wrestled in WCW and TNA, bringing wow. that Jagalo vibe into the squared circle, rocking face paint and all. <laughs> Jagalo. <laughs> yo, it ain't just about showing up, they took it to the next level. ICP created their own wrestling promotion called Juggalo Championship Wrestling That's true. JCW Shaw. That's where they blend their love for the rap game with the wrestling scene. It's about hardcore matches with that unique Juggalo flavor. They host events, sometimes even at the gathering of the Juggalos, making it a dope mix of music and wrestling madness. I love it. ICP and wrestling, it's like Fago and Ice, perfect together, giving the fam what they love. Action, music, and mad clown love. Whoop, 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 whoop. Should we keep hard drive the intern a juggalo forever? <laughs> Should I, I? I have the option. Would you like him to stay? He hasn't it, been that using is his, ridiculous. He hasn't been using his catchphrases. Would you like hard drive the robot intern? It it gave us a pre, pretty, pretty damn good, good. concise pretty damn answer good. Yeah. that was not confusing and had accurate information in there. That's insane, dude. Uh, the juggalo. The, I mean, everybody should be using this for everything, right? Like uh, uh, kids for pa- for like papers they write. Uh, it has I, its limitations, I think. If you're right? in, like, if, I'm, I, I say I'm very bored of it. I am very bored of it. So if you're in college or high school, you could write yeah. entire papers with this, right? Yes. And then just change them. But words they have that, other software that combats it. Like it, you can find yes. if you did it with this. Hundred percent. 
now, and they're working uh, at the same speed. So if you were to if you were to write a paper using ChatGPT, there are GPTs that can absolutely one hundred percent say this is plagiarized, this is fake. You did not do this. But what if you took the paper and then just changed? Even every sentence into your own kind of I language. I don't know how know? specific they would get. Like I, that's how I did school. The way that I dominated school and got A's on all my papers is, I would go and then I would read about stuff. I would read a passage, and then, like literally, it's probably helped me improv. Right? I would read a passage. Like let's say that passage. And then put it in your own words. Yeah, yeah. But I became really good at it. Yeah. Like yeah. like to the point where you know I could just read a sentence and immediately change it in my own voice. And yeah. that's what ChatGPT is doing. Yeah, it's plagiarism. Yeah. <laughs> well, it only is if you really truly copy it. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, if yeah. you look at, you know. That's a mean, loophole. Yeah, play, yeah, play, it's play a loophole loophole <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I, I changed it a little bit. Here, Here is the final version of Hard Drive. So here he is now. Got it, Dan. Keeping it tight and right with the quick info drops. ICP, Shaggy 2, Dope and Violent J, <laughs> Dig Wrestling Big Time. Created Juggalo Championship Wrestling, JCW Blending Rap and Wrestling. They perform at events, bringing that hardcore Juggalo spirit to the ring. Here we go. From the Tom and Dan Studio Newsroom, I'm Hard Drive, the Juggalo Robot Intern. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. He didn't give me a whoop whoop on me, and I wanted a whoop whoop. So, um, before that interview, um, because he was supposed yeah, to tell the story, tell the story. Um, call in yesterday, and then there was like, I'm sure in Daniel and I have seen this, like anytime someone has something to promote to, to promote or whatever, like their publicist gives them a list of numbers to call. And like, so they're just doing back to back interviews. And this with, is a hard one because it's, um, it's welcome to Rockville and Rockville. That's May 9th. And that's got a hundred, gigantic. It's a hundred bands or yeah. something. And I bet you he's calling sun up to sundown. Yeah. And then, so, uh, so then, you know, the schedule got pushed back yesterday. So he's like, can we call you tomorrow? And it was like, I think it was our tour manager. Right. And he's like, we're going to be in uh, Canada tomorrow. And then we're trying to figure out the, uh, the time zones or sure. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, yeah, call he said his service. I mean, Billy was telling me too, that the cell service was terrible too. Yeah, so. And I'm just like, call us tomorrow. So then we get a call at uh, 2 PM today and it's this lady and she's like, I'm CC, I'm uh, ICP's publicist. She's like, who'd you talk Wait, to yesterday? CC is ICP? <laughs> Are they all letters? CC. I'm CC for ICP. Yeah. You want to talk to S2D? That's and, Shaggy too dope. And, or do you want to talk to VJ? And um, no disrespect at all, but uh, if I was going to make a joke that you sounded like ICP's publicist. <laughs> 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 Just imagine what that sounds like. <laughs> and then that's what it sounds like. <laughs> anyway, so then she's like, who called you? And yesterday, I'm like, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, they just said that they're going to reschedule tomorrow. Well, I say tomorrow. shame on you there, too. Uh, me? I mean, first rule of business, know who you're talking <laughs> you to. Write it down. Memory. it. Take I, a snapshot of your memory. You don't, when you talk I'll to me, you're like, hi, it. this is Bill from Shaggy 2 Dubs. Uh, we need to reschedule. Excuse me, who am I talking to again? <laughs> Bill, let me chat that down in case I need to have the don't receipts do for this conversation. Me. I will shake some someone's hand I in the lobby <laughs> and then uh, and then they'll tell me their name and they'll come sit down and we'll start the interview i'll forget their name yeah anyway, i have, a, so I have to admit I have something too i didn't know who anyone's been in the studio today i don't know who anybody's been so so then she's like i'm gonna get to the bottom of this so she puts me in that's an old lady thing to say then, right i'm gonna get to the bottom of this what are you scooby-doo and then another call's coming in i'm like oh we'll see what this is i pick it up and shaggy <laughs> and then i'm like hello and he's like yeah, shaggy i'm gonna call him for an interview and yeah. i'm like oh hey so, and it's funny because um, a lot of times the publicists end up complicating things too They're much. They're the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say I, I don't I'm not saying this person is. I'm saying across the board, if you're listening to this and you're make, a publicist, you're a t you're, you make things hard, man. They make it more complicated than it has to it's be. It's a gatekeeper. It's a yeah, stupid yeah. gatekeeper we don't need. Get rid of publicists. No. Unneeded. They, they do no. certain Sarah jobs. Sarah Silverman doesn't are, have one. <laughs> she still books herself. Yeah, I mean, because I'm sure that there's good and bad publicists. and uh, No, they're all bad. <laughs> but it has, in our history, it seems like the publicists do overcomplicate things that can but, be but simple. But think about it. Why couldn't you just give Shaggy an email with the 10 places he has to call and all the numbers? And then if you're the publicist, yeah. you just call him and check on it. You don't need to call me. Have Shaggy yeah. call me. I don't need you on the line. Yeah. You're just monkeying it up. If he's running you're... behind, then contact your publicist to let us know yeah. or whoever's on the list. But, uh, you know, you're starting to ask me, like, who, who authorized this? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> and also. Uh, you should have said D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing that back. 
Uh, she, she's like, you're telling me the password? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, what? What's that? Uh, remember the- Maha Bone? Yeah, Maha Bone. How do I know your thoughts? Because <laughs> <laughs> we were talking to each other for too My long. My God. If, if anybody, <laughs> I give Melissa- I gave you no Melissa, clue to Maha Melissa, Bone. you need to pull that. Because that, that should blow people's effing minds, the fact that you're like, what is it? I'm like, Maha Bone? And you're like, yes. <laughs> Where'd you even get that from? Because you- The you Shriners, have, man. It's the, but, or the Masons. It's yeah, yeah, but you have to say because I made the joke that D's nuts was the ICP password <laughs> yeah, of some sort, and I connected and, the dot. Yeah, then I was like, "What was that thing?" And then you, the Masons, Maha Bone. But that is a jump. Yeah. But that's because we talked to each other. Yeah, we for do. Too long. We do. We're gay. So long. We're gay. We made ourselves gay. We have the same. We know the roads we're going to. No, road. I know, I've been I down know this you road. better than anybody, and you know me better than anybody. I've been down this bone <laughs> road before. <laughs> <laughs> Maha Bone. Take a turn here. <laughs> Um, uh, what do you, oh, well, we gotta get out of here, I think, pretty soon. You wanna do a couple of voicemails just yeah, to cleanse the palate? Well, I will say, like, uh, it was interesting to hear him talk about, like, uh, you know, coming up and promoting himself before the internet. I really do think that he, they wouldn't have had the same success because- It wouldn't have worked as hard. The mystery, because there was a point, I remember- You don't work as hard now. When I, I don't work as hard now. When I was in uh, middle school, I remember the, people were like, no one knows who the ICP are no one knows what they really look like like there's all these yeah. false urban legends yeah. out there they that, weren't seen without makeup that, that, yeah, i remember the, and, when that was a thing and that's what he's talking about yeah. and they, and that w helped to promote the allure of this mystery and they looked a little more menacing and you know the, i mean violent j is a big dude yeah yeah and then like who are these i remember like in middle school people were like oh this guy was in jail like yeah, all yeah. these urban legends well, by the you time know? they got to howard stern i was like yeah <laughs> you know like but but it's but that uh, mystery yeah. uh, couldn't exist uh, without the, well, because of the internet you just look up all oh, their real names barely. Well, like, <laughs> I, I think it probably Here's what it looks a, like. It probably helped a lot of artists, right? I mean, like it helped Lady Gaga, you know, like it, or, or, you know, it, like earlier on. Like I think if she started right now and st tried to do exactly what she did, she may not yeah. be able to achieve it because there right. was a level of anonymity that you were even able to have even in the early two thousands or mid two thousands that you yeah, can't yeah. get now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like with social media, a lot more people and celebrities are open with their at home lives and they don't like a lot of people. The wrestlers have dealt with this a lot. Yeah. Where like remember the Undertaker, like, you know, I measure half all of know, my life. Of lessons of on the, I try to live my life like the Undertaker. Yeah, no one knew who, who like no one ever heard him talk or yeah. give interviews or like no one knew that he was just a real dude that he had pajamas. <laughs> oh, God. Clothes. Did you know, Dog the Bounty Hunter's book came out today? Oh, really? Nine lives and counting. <laughs> He's on a book tour with his new wife. Oh, I followed the S out of him. Oh, can Billy get his dog? I can't. Uh, can I bet Billy could get his dog. He just did Fox News this morning. Oh. He was talking about walking the path of Christ. And I was like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. I shared them on. Okay, I got in trouble with Andrea because I started sharing. I would drop. Oh. So he I moved to Marco <laughs> Island. No, he did. Crystal was he, did. he moved to Marco Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're thinking of renaming your grandfather, <laughs> your your wife's grandfather's bridge, the dog, the bounty hunter, uh, crushing the ice pipe bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I so I got in trouble with Andrea a little bit. She don't really doesn't watch my feed, but I throw in my you know like in my Instagram reels, I throw oh. all kinds of stuff in there that I think is funny. But lately, I've been sneaking a lot of Dog the Bounty Hunter. They're not funny. They're re he's being serious. But I sl I throw them in there because they make me laugh because oh. I oh I love him. I don't think he's alive. What do you mean? He doesn't talk that much anymore, and he's kind of on autopilot where he just talks about. This is mean, but he talks about, he'll just talk about like the path of Christ and how he wants to help all the felons. And then he's like, I'm sorry, I'm going to cry. And then he starts <laughs> crying. crying. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I don't, like, it seems well, like. Well, he's got to be in his, how old is Don? I don't he, know. He's in let his 60s. Let me ask our intern. Hold on, let me yeah. ask her. Uh, let's he's got to be in his 60s. How old is Don? Maybe Don? early 70s. I don't know. I mean, he looks. He's a hard living. It's hard <laughs> living. Yeah, it looks hard. So yeah. Andrew is like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just, you know, I just think it's funny. And she's like, yeah, knock that off. You know, like, yeah, knock it off. All right, here we go. Hit it. Um, Dog the Bounty Hunter, born Dwayne Chapman, is 70 years old, born on February 2nd, 1953. From the Tom and Dan Studio Newsroom, I'm Hard Drive, the Juggalo Robot Intern. He didn't even say any woo woo. <laughs> he stopped Ooh. talking like a Juggalo. Hold on, tell him that. Oh. Watch this. You <laughs> stop talking like a juggalo. <laughs> Let's see what he says. It'd be better if you can uh, 
like there was a computer. Oh, he did it. Yeah, he's he's it, he's sad that you could punch or beat and somehow. Don't make that. Don't, we'll get there. <laughs> Let's write that down. Hold on. He did it. He did it. He did. It. My bad, fam. Let's get it right. Dog the bounty hunter. That's Dwayne Chapman. He's seventy years old. Been on the hunt since fifty three. Keeping it wild. Juggalo style. From the Tom and Dan Studio Newsroom, I'm Hard Drive, the Juggalo robot intern. Whoop whoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. He's a little passive aggressive. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, yeah. He did. I, was like, right, I turned around. Like, were, were you doing that because I asked you to stay in Juggalo character? Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah. why you were doing that? Yeah, yeah. That sounded like you were yeah. like, all right, you can flog my shoes. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good way I don't want to do it now. That's a good way of getting a computer beating. <laughs> flog this computer. <laughs> all right, we got to get out of here. Okay. Um, well, uh, what day is today? Friday. Uh, the, we'll see you at the BDM meetup if you're a BDM. Uh, that's Where gonna be am I? <laughs> the Saturday 420. Yeah, yeah. And you know all the details if you're a BDM. Yep. So uh, we'll see you on Monday. Whoop whoop. All right. That was fun. That was fun.